Here I'm going to get a full weather brief from my flight from Roseburg up to Seattle. So I'm going to click on this full weather brief button, which brings up a dialog box that allows me to set certain parameters. Here I can see, for example, I'm going to get all information within 25 miles of my flight path. For planning purposes, I'm assuming I'm going to be leaving within two hours, and my flight in route is going to take about three hours. After some processing, my full flight brief is displayed. Let's take a quick look at what a flight brief might include. According to the AIM, a good pre-flight briefing includes the following set of information. We've attempted to organize the pre-flight briefing along these same eight categories. At the top is some route summary information, including your waypoints, distances, magnetic, and true bearings. The first section covers adverse conditions. This includes airmets and sigmets in the first section and TFRs in the bottom section. For airmets and sigmets, we include only those that are within your particular flight path, and we've listed them in summary form. If you're looking for details, click any of the pluses and you'll see the original text of the airmet or sigmet. We include a chart so you can visualize where those airmets and sigmets are along your path. For TFRs, we again show you only those TFRs that are within your particular flight path, none in this case, and we list additional TFRs for which we cannot determine whether they are within your path or not. Like airmets and sigmets, clicking on the plus button will show you details. The next section covers the synopsis, which includes the location and movement of weather systems. Here we show the current surface analysis chart, as well as 12, 24, 36, and 48 hour forecasts. Section 3 covers current conditions, including METARs and PIREPs. First, we collect only METARs and PIREPs, which are within the stated distance of your flight path. Second, we provide summaries of these METARs and PIREPs in the order from your originating airport to your destinating airport. At a glance, you can see the current weather at a number of different airports. We show the flight category in this column. It's color-coded based on whether it's VFR, IFR, marginal, or low IFR. And we use the same highlight color to indicate exactly what is causing the low or marginal IFR condition. So in this case, the blue would have made this marginal IFR, but because it's broken at 800 feet, it's declared as IFR. At a glance, you can quickly see where your problem airports may be. For most METARs, we also include altimeter, elevation of the airport, as well as a calculated current density altitude of the airport. As you've seen before, if you click on one of these plus signs, you will get the details about the particular airport, as well as the original METAR text. We also collect all PIREPs within the stated distance for the past few hours. The PIREPs are shown in summary form, and as always, you can click on the plus sign to see the original text, as well as the decoded airport location, and the reporting aircraft. Section 4 is the en route forecast. Here we'll include all area forecasts which cross your flight path. Also important to the en route forecast are the destination forecasts and we'll include the TAFs in the next section. Our planned flight is covered by the San Francisco area forecast. Here we show you the translated version, for example here of the Western Cascades, but if you'd rather see the non-translated version, we provide that as you get directly from NOAA. Here's a feature you can use anywhere. Note that wherever there are times, we italicize them. If they're italicized, you can do a single click and it'll change from Zulu to the time that's local to your browser. This is especially useful if you're flying in the same time zone that you're reading this report. Next are all the TAFs within your flight path, again ordered from your originating airport to your destination airport. As with METARs, we've color-coded the flight category and use the same highlight color to indicate 
what the causing weather condition may be. Again, the original TAF report can be seen by clicking on the plus sign. In addition, we use your estimated departure and arrival time to highlight using gray those particular lines of the TAF which will be active during your flight. Section 6 is winds aloft. Here we show a decoded winds and temperature aloft report for all those reporting airports that are near your flight path. Section 7 shows NOTAMs. For the NOTAM section, if you have a valid NOTAM subscription, we show you a detailed view identical to the view you would get on the NOTAM reporting page. If you do not have a current NOTAM subscription, we'll only show you summarized information. The detailed view, which you see here, is described more fully in a separate video. But in summary, you can see the original form of the NOTAM, as well as this translated form, where we've separated the NOTAMs out based on overall category, highlighted those based on your destination and departure routes. You can click to see the original details here. Clicking on the airport name will bring up standard airport information. including links to current procedures. After all of the NOTAMs are the final two sections with a reminder to contact your briefer for current information. In all, that's a lot of information, but we hope we've provided it to you in a way that's easy for you to read and clearly highlights those places where weather, TFRs, or NOTAMs may seriously affect your flight. Finally, all of this information is securely stored with your user ID in case you need to refer to it later. Happy flying!